You can't always live in the land of happy clappy. It's part of human experience, the journey of life, going through a lot of change. Sometimes it's okay to have hippo time. I'm about to tell you a story. None of you have heard the story and let all, let all of you know there's a happy ending. 2004, I want to write a book called Sumo. My mate Steve puts me in top with one of the top publishers in the UK about publishing it. He says, Paul will love it. And I know the editor makes the decisions. I'll pass on your details to her. I put, I put so much effort into the book proposal. Two weeks after I sent it, I get this. After a few opening pleasantries, she says, I have to say my reaction to your title isn't very positive. You see, I'm not convinced that shut up, move on, see on the front of a book in a bookstore is going to make the majority of people think I must have that. It wouldn't make me want to buy it, it's quite aggressive, and I don't particularly like being told to shut up. And I'm a northerner. I think more sensitive southerners might be turned off by this evening. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, come off the fence, tell me what you really think. <laughs> I did think, though, about question number four, how can I influence and improve the situation? My mate Steve, who introduced me to this one, was speaking at an event in Leeds. It was a charity event. I was going along to support him, and so was that woman. I, get, I sent her an email and said, I take on board all you say about sumo sounding aggressive, but I genuinely, honestly believe it's got some legs in it. Could I possibly meet you for an hour beforehand, take you for coffee before that event? I just want to share a bit more about why I think sumo could actually fly. She agrees to that. We meet in Borders in Leeds. She gets a coffee. I take me sumo t-shirts. I take me testimonial letter from the Premiership football team. I give her a copy of the postcards. The one you've got. I say, look at the one on, look at the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner, Rachel. I say, it's of a funny looking guy on a unicycle. I said, a sumo on a unicycle. I said, maybe that could be the front cover. I said, if people look at that, I don't think they'll see it as aggressive. They might see it as fun, different, memorable, quirky, but not aggressive. She says, you know what, I'm going to take this back to the sales team. If they think they can take this to the book trade and sell it to them, you've got yourself a deal. I'm like, yes. And a week later, I've spoken to other colleagues and their reaction was similar to mine. A book title has to work from the outset. And Paul, yours doesn't. Now, of course you know there's a happy ending. But at the time, I didn't know that. I wasn't ready just to ponder my seven questions and move on. <laughs> Sometimes you need to give yourself a bit of hippo time, you need a wallow. But do you, want to, do, you want to make, do you want to say a couple of things? Never make a really, really important decision when you're in hippo time, because you're just in an emotional state. Just give it a bit of time. And please also remember this, hippo time is okay. It's okay. But it's temporary. Folks, it's part of the journey, but it shouldn't be our destination. But some people spend too long wallowing. They spend too long in hippo time. I'm 44. Life, let me tell you, is too short to spend too long in hippo time. It's okay, but it is temporary. It's not our destination. Unless, of course, you choose to make it so. Love to tell you that within five minutes I've shut up and moved on from that email, but I haven't. 48 hours later, I'm working in London. I get a train from Warrington, Bankey to London, Euston. I'm still in my hippo time, but I've got this kind of ritual. And this is what I encourage you. Sometimes even when you're feeling down, behave right. You see, for me, sometimes feeling down, but I still read books. In my car, I sometimes listen to audio CDs. I do stuff that will pick me up. Zig Ziglar said this, motivation is a bit like having a wash. You need to do it more than once to get the full benefit. Some of you need to be aware of that. <laughs> you know, so I wouldn't just like, oh, I've heard McGee, that's it, we've done sumo. Sometimes it's about revisiting, replaying, read this book, look at that, look at this. I go into WH Smith's, a forecourt of London, Euston. I go to the business management section. There's a book there that dominates the top shelf. It's a book called Who Moved My Cheese? It's a book about four mice and how they deal with change. I'm looking at it, it's still in my hippo time, going, I'll flipping well move your cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been sumo up there. And then I had a bit of a, an epiphany, if you want to use that phrase. I suddenly thought to myself, do you know what? 
in pro times over, mate. You've had your wallow. There's more than one publisher in the UK. It's a bit ironic, really. I only sent one sample chapter to that publisher. It was called Learn Latin. It's one of my, it's my fifth principle in the book. Learn Latin. You started off learning Norwegian. Carpe diem. That's the Latin phrase to learn. Seize the day. Seize the day. Went back to my office 48 hours later. It was a slow train. <laughs> <laughs> Got my book proposal out. You know there's a happy ending. Do you know what happened before the happy ending? No, 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 no. Got a further eight no's. People sometimes say, well, why do you tell us the story? Because I'm not one of, you know, it's Mancunian motivation. <laughs> tell me as it is. No bull. Let's be really practical. You can't just think good thoughts and it'll all work for you. No matter what the book, The Secret, actually says. You can't just do that. You've got to take some action. You've got to see. I love the word seize. That ain't a passive word, is it? That's about doing stuff even when you feel uncomfortable. That's about doing stuff and going on to a JCI meeting or a conference or up to Aberdeen and not just for the alcohol and the party, but think maybe I'll also get something else from it as well. It's about going, I will seize the day. I've got eight no's, but I've got three yeses. The book came out in June 05. In the May, the publisher contacts me, says, Paul W. H. Smith's have been on. I said, oh, yeah. He said, they've chosen to make Sumo business book of the month when it comes out. I went, oh. <laughs> it's not really a business book, though, is it? It's more of a personal development book. He said, Paul, if W.H. Smiths want to make it business book, it's a business book, okay. <laughs> I said, so what does that mean? He says, it means this. When you go into a W.H. Smiths in the month of June, there's a business management section there, you won't see a book like Who Moved My Cheese on the top shelf. You'll see the funny looking guy on the unicycle. That's a London railway station, June 05. Those of you near the front may see the book that wasn't being as well promoted at the time, bottom right corner was by a guy called Andrew Sugar called The Apprentice. Because <laughs> <laughs> maybe sometimes it's good not to leave your dreams in the bin. It's good to have your hippo time. <clears throat> but it's good to decide, I will learn Latin, I will seize the day. Ultimately though, folks, let me tell you this, it's not about the book. It is about the message. So let me just wrap up by just getting to review a sec. Take time out. Not just when you come to an event like this, but it's just good to take some time out to press pause. Think about how you're responding to stuff. Be aware of the inner critic and the martyr and other types of thinking that won't help you. Use the seven questions. They're just a catalyst. You'll come up with some other stuff. But we need as much bloody help and support as we can get at the moment, I'll tell you. Because we're surrounded by a lot of negativity. We're surrounded by people who think it's a lot easier to wear the victim t-shirt. Have hippo time, just remember it's temporary. And learn that Latin phrase, carpe diem, seize the day. And do you know what I think's really neat about this stuff? It won't just be you who benefits, I think other people can as well. I'll leave you with this, it's an email from a girl called, or a woman called Nikki. Nikki just says this, hi Paul, I was made redundant on Friday, it was a dull but well paid job. I wallowed for half a day, then still feeling angry and let down on my way home, I bought your book in Heathrow Airport. And I read it from cover to cover whilst waiting for my flight. You see, I've always been the type of person to see opportunities when faced with adversity. But your book has given me the insight, the courage and the determination to pursue my dream career. Thank you. Folks, if I'm honest with you, I like, I like that photo. Pretty proud of that, if I'm honest. Sumo, now it's been out obviously three and a half years, it's been translated into 11 different languages. And again, if I'm honest, I get a bit of a buzz out of that. <laughs> but you know, that's just ego stuff. Why do I really get something when people email me about how it's helped them? Well, particularly with Nikki, the reason why I get such a buzz is because she's never met me. And she's never heard me speak. But Sumo made a difference to her. Folks, in all that you're doing for the coming year, and for the rest of your lives, I wish you a shed load of success. And I hope Suma makes a difference to you. Thanks very much. Cheers.